The contracts which provides the framework for the organization known as the United States government is called the Constitution. That contract was hammered out in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania between May and September 1787. The rank and file approved that contract at state conventions that occurred December 7, 1787 through May 29, 1790. Unlike the fairy tale version of American history taught in most schools today, some of those votes to ratify the Constitution were very close. In some states, ratifying the Constitution was very controversial. In John Adams' home state on February the 6th, 1788, the Massachusetts Convention voted 187 yes to 168 no. On June 21, 1788, the New Hampshire Convention voted 57 yes to 47 no. Four days later, on June the 25th, the Virginia Convention voted 89 to 79 to approve the adoption of the Constitution. Approval there came over the strong objections of then-Governor Patrick Henry, he of give me liberty or give me death fame. In New York, on July 26th, the vote was 30 yes to 27 no. And it was in New York that a series of essays now known as the Federalist Papers sold the idea of approving the Constitution to a generally unhappy rural constituency. In 1790, after George Washington was president and the new government was in operation, Rhode Island still had not ratified the Constitution. With the threat of being treated like other foreign governments, their convention on May 29, 1790, voted 34 yes to 32 no. Now here's my point. Despite strong objections, the contract we call the Constitution was approved. In America, we believe that a deal is a deal. And by the terms of that contract, it takes two-thirds of the House, two-thirds of the Senate, and three-fourths of the state legislatures to change the contract. No president or Congress is permitted to change those terms without the formal agreement of the states. Do you hear me, radical Democrats? Do you hear me, Mr. President? I'm Lee Presser.